All right, hello once again. Uh, we just covered exponential equations in the last video, which took longer than expected, but it was all worth it. In this video, we're going to do logarithmic equations. No idea how long it's going to be, but you can already tell because you can see how long the video is. Hopefully, it's not too long. It will probably be maybe 20 minutes. I don't, I don't know. Um, but logarithm equations. So um, basically... We've kind of mentioned this already sort of in the last one, but if we have a log with a base b of x equal to a log with the same base of y, of course, x and y have to be the same thing. Um, they'll have to be equal if uh, these logs are equal. But what we're really going to need is, uh, we talked about this way back in 7.3. I think it was 7.3 or 7.4, but I think it was 7.3. Um, Converting logarithms to exponential equations. So remember the property where if you have, uh, let me just erase some of this. If we have log base b of a equal to, let's say, x. Just again, this is just general stuff. That this is the logarithm equation, but we can convert it into an exponential equation. The exponential equation would be b to the x power equals a. Uh, we talked about how we can move these things around in 7.3. It's one of the really important skills that we're going to need um, because we're going to do this pretty much on majority of these problems that we're going to work out. So let's go ahead and let's get into some of these examples. But remember this very, very well. Example 1 or 7, whatever, but the first one in the video. We've got a log base 3 uh, of x minus 5 equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this logarithm equation into an exponential equation. So if I do that, I know that this base here will be the base of my exponential equation. I know that 2 will become the exponent on my exponential equation, and that we're going to equal x minus 5. Now, if you're lost on what I just did there, please go back, maybe pause this video, Go find my, or maybe I'll link it in the description if I remember, but go find my uh, 7.3 notes. Um, it'll probably say uh, exponential and logarithmic. I don't know what it says, but try to find the 7.3, 7.4. I'll try to link it in the description if I can um, when this goes on YouTube. But anyway, hopefully you remember this property from when we discussed it in class. Uh, we just took this log equation and we convert it into an exponential equation because, well, now it's kind of a piece of cake. We know what 3 to the second is, right? 3 to the second is 9. So we have 9 equal to x minus 5. So if we add 5 to both sides. Bada bing, bada boom, we get 14 equals to x. Apologize for that 5. Again, I'm not writing this on a flat surface, so it's, it's a little tricky because my wrist is like... Anyway, x equals 14. Now, we do sometimes want to check to make sure that this works. So let's plug in that 14 real quick uh, and make sure that it works. So if I do that, it's going to be a log with a base 3, uh, 14 minus 5. Now, if we did 14 minus 5, oops, 14 minus 5 is 9, correct? So let's go ahead and put this in, in as 9, equal to 2. Uh, well, that looks like it. Got, anyway, that. We can type that in the calculator just to make sure it's true. And I'm not going to save this, so I apologize. But last time I saved it, uh, it didn't go away. So even when I tried to reopen it. So let's just quickly check. Uh, we're going to go to the math key. We're going to go to our log base. We should be. We should already know this, but um, log base, what was it again? I forget what it was. So log base 3. So log base 3, and we said that it was 14 minus 5. If you want to type in 14 minus 5, you can, but we know 14 minus 5 is 9, but it's probably better that we type it in the way it was. And we should get 2, and we do. So that 14 works, right? 14 was the answer. So let's try example 2 now, or 8, but the second one. So this one we have to do a little bit more math because we have two logs here. And what we're our first goal is to combine these into just one logarithm. So if you remember, we talked about this in 7.4, properties of logarithms, that 
subtracting logs really means taking these values in the logs and dividing them. So subtracting logs is really going to take these values within them and divide them. So it'll be really 45x divided by 3 into one log. So we'll have the log that these will combine into, but it'll be 45x divided by 3. Now we're going to simplify that. 45 divided by 3 is 15. So really this is the log 15, oh my gosh, log of 15x equal to 1. And it's equal to 1. So we haven't changed the 1. The 1's been the same thing this whole time. But if, if I lost you on that one, go back and watch a 7.4 video because I discuss the properties of the logs and how that works. Subtracting logarithms means dividing the values inside those logarithms. Of course, it's the first value divided by the second value. So 45x divided by the 3, which makes 15x. So now that we've got this, now I'm going to change it back into an exponential equation just like I did in example 1. Now to do that, you need to know what the base is of this log. Now there is no base written here, which means it's a common logarithm, which means that the base is 10. That's very important to know because we need to make sure we use that base, that number 10, when I write exponential equation. So my exponential equation conversion, uh, it'll be this 10 because that's the base. The 1 will be the exponent, so it'll be 10 to the first power equals that 15x. So now we can just solve this. I know 10 to the first power is just 10, right? So 10 equals 15x. If I want to get that x by itself, I'll divide by 15. And so I end up with x equal to 10 over 15, which reduces to 2 thirds. And there's our answer. All right, let's move on. Let's try the third example on this page. Can I clear this? Okay. So this example, um, I don't have to combine anything. It's another logarithm. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and convert this logarithm back into uh, exponential. Now, most people would probably be tempted to move the squared to the front. Mm. The reason I don't want to do that is because I'm already kind of in a good spot here with my logarithm set up the way that it is to so just go ahead and put it into exponential form. So if I just go ahead and put, throw it in exponential form, I'll be fine. So if exponential form, it'll be 4 as my base, 7 as the exponent equals x squared. And now I can solve this. 4 to the 7th power is just a number. I can type that in the calculator to figure out what that is. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to have to erase it and rewrite this, but 4 to the 7th power equals x squared. So let's just type it in 4 to the 7th power is 16,384. So we're going to have, um, I really should just do it on here. Let's clear this. Uh, I already forgot what the number was, but I knew it was 4. Well, originally it was 4 to the 7th power equals x squared, but I just found out that 4 to the 7th power was... 16,384. So it's 16,384 equal to x squared. And of course, if I want to get the x by itself and get rid of the squared, I just need to square root these sides. That's going to cancel that out and leave me with x. And now let the calculator do the square root of 16,384. So calculator, what is the square root of 16,384? It's 128. So there's our answer. X is equal to 128. So really not that bad. Really not that difficult of a problem. But uh, it's all really key on that first step, which was converting it into an exponential equation. Which is why I think logarithm equations tend to be easier than the exponential ones. It's kind of it's kind of your opinion. But um, yeah, I don't think they're too bad. Let's try this example here. Now, this one, I can, I'm, I know already that we're going to have to plug in our answers when we're done to see if they're right. And I'll explain why I know that uh, as we work the problem out. But let's go ahead. Let's put this on my other piece of paper or my other, it's not a piece of paper, but it's like a, it's like a digital piece of paper. Anyway, log X equals, or log X plus log X plus nine equals one. So we got log X plus log x plus 9 equals 1. Let me just make sure I did that right. Yes. So 
First thing I, mean, I wanna do is combine these into just a single logarithm. Now, since it's adding, I know that I really need to be multiplying uh, these values in the logs together. So adding logs means multiplying these. And remember, I covered that in the 7-4 video if you wanna go back and check that out. So if I multiply x and x plus nine, it's kind of like a distributing thing. I have to multiply x with both of these. So I'll have log and x times x will be x squared. And then uh, x times nine will be just nine x. So I have log of x squared plus nine x equal to one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to convert this back into an exponential equation. Now to do that, I need to know the base. So since it's a common log, I know that the base here is 10. So if I make this an exponential equation, I know it'll be 10, uh, excuse me, to the first power, because one will be the exponent, equals this x squared plus 9x. Now, the reason I know I'm going to have to check my answers, by the way, is because I am building a quadratic. I noticed as soon as I got this x squared that I was going to have a quadratic, and a quadratic will have two answers, typically two answers. It might have one, but typically has two answers. And if we get two answers here, you know, odds are only one of them is going to actually work. The other one will be extraneous. The other one won't actually work. So we'll have to check them when we finish. And I knew that was going to happen because when I saw the plus sign in the beginning, I knew I was going to have to multiply x with x. So I knew as soon as I was going to do that, that I'd get x squared and eventually a quadratic. So I kind of saw that ahead of time, which is why I mentioned it beforehand. Um, well, let's go ahead. Let's finish this problem. So really what this says and uh, I hope you're okay with, I'm just gonna erase this and just put it back up because I know I'm gonna need a lot of space to do this quadratic. So I have 10 equals x squared plus nine x, 10 equals x squared plus nine x. Now to make this a quadratic, I need it to equal zero. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move this 10 to this side. So I have zero equal to x squared plus nine x minus 10. And so now I've got this quadratic and I need to factor this quadratic to solve it. So I'm going to factor it using my product and sum method. You guys might have learned it a different way, but um, from one of my students, you've learned it this way. So I'm looking for two numbers. A is 1, C is negative 10. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 10 and then add to the B value, which is 9. So what two numbers will multiply to make negative 10? Something times something equal negative 10. And the same two numbers add, that'll equal 9. Hmm. How about... 10 and negative 1. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, and 10 plus negative 1 is 9. So there's our numbers. So um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut just for the sake of this video. I know the calculators can do the factoring as well. So if you got one of the graphing calculators, you probably already finished this, but uh, let me go ahead. Since a is 1, I know that these are in my factors. That'll have my two factors will be x plus 10 because of this positive 10. And the other one will be x minus 1 because of this minus 1. I know I just really have to plug them in. And that Again, that only works because the a value here is 1. It wouldn't work if it was like 2x squared. I wouldn't be able to do that shortcut. I'd have to do it the longer way. But I'm going to save myself some time. So we have 0 equals x plus 10 and x minus 1. So I've got two equations. I've got x plus 10 equal to 0. And... Uh, I've got the x minus one equal to zero. So if I solve that, this will be x equal to negative 10, and this one will be x equal to positive one. So there's my two solutions. Now, I need to check to make sure that they, that they work. One of them I know does, um, but I don't think both do. So if, let's just test it out. Uh, we're gonna plug it back into our original problem and see if it works. Um, yeah, we'll do the, let's try the negative 10 first. We'll see if that works if I plug it in. So note, remember the original problem is this. So if I plug in negative 10, it's going to be log of negative 10 plus log of negative 10 plus nine. And we're going to type this in the calculator and see if it equals one. So let's try it. Log of negative 10 I opened up an extra parenthesis there. Let's go ahead and start over. Log of negative 10 plus log of negative 10 plus 9. And we're going to see what that equals. Now, it doesn't work. So 
uh, I believe I typed it in right, but I didn't get an answer. It says non-real answer. So negative 10 seems to not work. Let's try the, what was the other answer I got? Positive one. The other answer I got was positive one. Yeah, so let's try plugging in a positive one instead. So it'll be a log of one, and then it'll be a log of one plus nine. I'm gonna type this in, and I'll see if the calculator equals one. So let's try it. Uh, log, uh, oops, hold on, I gotta quit out of this first. All right, log, where'd it go? Log of one plus log of one plus nine. And does it equal one? Yes, it does. So one works, negative 10 doesn't. So the only answer here is x equals one. So you can't say x equals negative 10 because the negative 10 doesn't actually work. So just be uh, kind of aware of that. All right. I think just for the sake, I've, I've kind of shown you a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to end the video here just because I don't want it to be too long, but um, I hope it helped. If you need me to do more, just ask me to. I'm happy to go ahead and maybe finish the rest of these uh, problems that you see here. Uh, if you want to, I can I can make another video with them. But I know it's getting kind of long, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I'll see you guys later. I think we still have a little bit more to do in this section, uh, the 7.6 chapter we need to do, and I'll cover that in the next video. So I'll see you there. Bye.